Welcome everybody to this panel discussion with the innovators behind the new Pira project hosted at the Linux Foundation. Uh, in this session, we're gonna talk about the history of the Pira project, where it originated, who created it, and how you can get involved. Uh, so today with me, I've got two folks from the Prometeo platform team and uh, my colleague Upkar as well. So, um, Salome, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Okay, hello, hi to everyone. My name is Salome Valero. I love technology, innovation, and this amazing era of business transformation with AI and cloud. And I live in the south of Europe. I live in Spain, in Barcelona. I have a PhD in engineering with experience in IT outsourcing services in the banking sector mainly. I also work on good tech projects and I'm co-founder of Prometeo with Marco. And I'm the mommy of two children worried about climate change, natural disaster, and the living conditions for next generation. Daniel, thanks for having me today. Great, thanks for joining us. Uh, so Marco, uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Hello, nice to be here in the city of Prometeo platform. I live in Barcelona and I work in the same company with uh, Salome in a financial sector. And uh, I'm in the father of uh, two children. The, the biggest one, she has uh, five years. She's five years old. And she's worried about climate change too. <laughs> so I, she considered me an example to follow in the future and to uh, have ideas in order to save the planet. And uh, thank you for the invitation. Great, thanks for being with us, Marco. And uh, Okar. Thanks, Daniel. Um, so I'm a software engineer with IBM. I have been part of uh, the Prometeo project since it won the Call for Code challenge. Um, I live in California. We've had every year we have so many wildfires here um, that I, I can I really feel connected to the project, and I'm, I'm just happy to be part of it. Okay, great. All right. So um, why don't I start with just uh, setting the context a little bit on the background of why uh, why we're here uh, and what Call for Code is. So uh, if you're not familiar with it, Call for Code is an umbrella, an initiative. Uh, that the Linux Foundation is part of, as well as IBM, the United Nations, and David Clark Cause. Uh, we kicked it off in 2018, and the goal was to engage developers to take on the world's greatest challenges. So we have an annual competition every year uh, where there's a winner announced. In, in that case, it was, uh, it was Prometeo in 2019. And we, what sets Call for Code apart as a competition, as an initiative, uh, is that we don't just have the competition. Uh, what we want to see come out of it every year is a solution that can be incubated and supported and uh, put to work as a sustainable open source project. Uh, so we'll get to that in a little bit more detail uh, shortly. Um, so since 2018, we've had 400,000 developers, probably half a million now, take part in the competitions. And um, they've come from places around the world, uh, obviously Spain and the United States, but uh, plenty of folks from all continents. I think somebody registered from Antarctica at one point. I don't know if they're playing around with their registration form, but we covered at least six continents that I know for sure. So it's a large community uh, and uh, it's hosted at the Linux Foundation, uh, which we'll get into in a little bit here. So um, as Salome mentioned and Marco mentioned, climate change is a huge part of the problem domain we try to take on with Call for Code. So uh, if you're familiar with some of the projects out there, um, we, we did take on natural disasters, wildfires, emergency communications. We've also looked at clean water, zero hunger, responsible consumption and production, uh, as well as the social and business impact of the pandemic and racial justice through the program. So the, the competition, you can look out for it, take part in it, learn some skills through it, uh, as well as taking part in some of the projects that have come out of uh, the competitions, uh, which get incubated and work their way into the open source community. So Call for Code, the competition, is the idea creation. Uh, folks like myself um, and Ukkar at IBM work with the top teams like Salome and Marco to improve their solution, test it, and get it ready for use uh, by others at the, at the Linux Foundation, where it can form a great foundation for um, the businesses that bring them forward, 
for the organizations to bring forward, as well as being ready for that community of contributors. So uh, beyond uh, what you learned today, I encourage you to check out uh, the, the LinuxFoundation.org website. It's got a list of the 14 projects, including the one we're gonna talk about today there. Uh, and they each have corresponding uh, GitHub and Slack organizations that you can connect with. So um, now that we've got that covered, I'm going to ask my first question of Salome. Um, so Salome, um, oops, just one second here. Can you um, tell, tell, tell the listeners about the new Pura project, how it relates to Prometeo, kind of history of it, um, things like that? How did it come to be? What's, what's the mission? Well, I'm really excited with Pira. Pira is a good example of the power of open source to accelerate technology innovation, and that can save lives. We want to help protect firefighters with technology. That is Prometeo mission. They are inhaling smoke and toxic substances. We must monitor their exposure to gases to have individualized, personalized strategies to protect them. And thanks to the Linux Foundation and in collaboration with IBM, we will accelerate the development and the deployment of firefighter safety technology around the world through PIRA. We will join our efforts with the rest of the global open source community to improve the solution. That is the challenge. Our dream is having every wildland firefighter with a Prometeo device. We want to protect them. PIRA is helping us to speed up the process to deploy it worldwide. We are working on it with an amazing people and partners from the Call for Code ecosystem. And through PIRA, we will make the dream reality. Thanks to everyone that are in our community. Thanks for your collaboration. Thanks for your contribution. Excellent. Thank you, Salome. Um, so can you give us a little bit of um, a history lesson on um, where Prometeo started with the solution, um, some of the testing that's been done as we got through different versions of it, uh, and some of the other folks that have helped join the community to get us to where we are today. Well, we started the journey two years ago when we won the Call for Code. Uh, that was only the beginning of the journey. And we started with version one. Today we are in version three and we improved the solution a lot. But this is a journey, so the, 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 we must work more in the solution uh, to, to, to get the, the dream. Okay, excellent, excellent. So uh, you've heard the overview of the project. Um, so let me turn now to Marco uh, to talk a little bit about how it works. Uh, how it achieves that mission, and some of the pieces that come into um, to play as as it, you know, it it tries to achieve its mission. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, the solution has different parts: a device that measure key variables from the environment, carbon monoxide, nitrogen dioxide, temperature, and humidity. This is the device that every firefighter has to wear during the wildfires. We have a mobile application that collect the data from the device, a smartwatch to receive notifications, and a platform in the cloud to process and report the status of the firefighters. When you turn on the device, it begins to read the sensors. If a mobile phone is connected, it will send the measurements to the cloud. It also has sensors so the firefighter can see the color status that is calculated in the cloud. The mobile application is the gateway between the device and the platform in the cloud. This application allows the user to log in into the platform and pair with the device. Once it's paired, the device will send the measurements through the mobile application. If there is internet, the information will be sent to the IoT platform service where it will be processed. Our flow then sends the data to the IBM Watson machine learning model. This model returns a simple color status that is displayed on a dashboard at the fire command center. If the color signal is green, 
the firefighter is okay. But if the color signal is yellow or red, the command center must take immediate action to remove the firefighter from the fire. Finally, the app will receive the color status from the cloud and it will be sent back to the device and the smartwatch. The firefighter will be notified by the device, LEDs, and vibrating the notifications of the smartwatch. Okay, and this is all about it. Workflow. Thank you. Nice. So can you explain how, so that's the technical solution. When the field tests have been done, can you explain how the process is and talk a bit about controlled burns versus wildfire burns? So um, the audience can learn about how this, um, how this is actually deployed in the field when, uh, when controlled burns happen. Who's where, what are the roles involved, uh, things like that. Yes, we have to uh, take into account that uh, there are wide fires where all the firefighters will be working to, to combat the fire, but uh, they have to avoid the fire in the future. They have to, in a strategic way, they have to avoid the possibility of fires in the in the future. So they do this kind of uh, control burns. They go to some place that they study before in the forest, and then they decide to burn the the grass, the the amount of uh, fuel that uh, there is in the in the mountain. Um, in order to avoid the fire in the future, if it happens, to arrive to, to, to a city, for example. So they study the, the mountain, the, the locations, in order to decide where to do this uh, control bears. So when they decide the, the place, there are uh, different people. There is uh, the boss of the, of the control bear that uh, check everything is okay. And there are people that they go with a, tor a torch in order to bear the grass in the forest. And it's important they have uh, a PIRA device because uh, it's the moment where they're going to inhale a lot of uh, toxic substances. So it's the moment they have to uh, wear this kind of um, devices uh, to check that uh, they're not going to overexpose uh, the exposition to carbon monoxide or nitrogen dioxide. We have a dashboard where we uh, measure these, uh, these uh, variables and uh, where we have in account different windows of exposition to the um, to these uh, toxic substances. So if the firefighter uh, is uh, in the limit of the 10 minutes uh, window, so it will be received a notification and uh, somebody, the, the, the boss of the bear has to decide to uh, take off the free from the fire. So um, this is the uh, important thing that we have to take into account in, in this kind of uh, control burns because they are inhaling and they're going to be a lot of uh, time in the wildfire in order to control and burn all this part of the forest that uh, has a lot of um, amount of uh, of uh, grass that uh, can be approved in the future. Great, great. So it's been amazing to watch the project go from the conception to the initial version to where it is today. And um, I, I've been fortunate enough to see some of these controlled burns myself. Uh, it, it's just amazing that technology, you, you think it's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. But um, you know the, the, pr the process that exists right now is um, you have the nurses that record how firefighters feel before the burn. Uh, they go around with a clipboard, check on those readings, talk to folks, check on them during the burn, and then check on them afterwards. And uh, it's, it's apparently managed completely by paper, Excel spreadsheets, and just the innovation you had to create and just digitize that alone uh, made a huge stride, I think. And it's just been amazing that going from the real-time data 
by displaying that on the dashboard to now doing the calculation over time, I think is really fascinating. There's a lot of great data science that has gone into that and just different international standards for exposure over time to carbon monoxide, 30 minutes, one hour, four hour, eight hour, uh, same for nitrogen dioxide. So it's, it's really quite fascinating to see not only that this is in place, but how many different ways it can be extended for the different types of use around the world. Um, so Upkar, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about the open source components. Um, so uh, Marco taught us about how the system works, but behind the scenes, what's it built on? Are there other Linux Foundation projects involved? Um, and uh, what sort of, what's the magic behind the scenes really? Yeah, Daniel, that's a really good question. So first of all, the, as Marco mentioned, there are quite a few moving pieces to, to Pira, right? We have uh, five different microservices built on different languages and open source frameworks, including Node.js, Flask for backend, and React.js for the front end. All of these solutions are hosted on GitHub in, in their own repositories under the Pira platform. Um, now, each microservices uses uh, you know, the 12th factor methodology to build independently services that are loosely tied to each other, but then again are individually containerized. Uh, we use uh, IBM Container Registry to host all these images where we continuously monitor for security issues. Uh, the team has also worked really hard to, to uh, provide Docker Compose scripts to ease the developer journey, um, you know, where the different services can be brought up with a single command. We use, uh, so I'm, I'm going to touch on a couple of different parts here. So for database, we use MariaDB, which is uh, one of the more popular open source relational databases. Uh, it was originally, um, it was sorry, it was made by the original developers of MySQL. Um, again, it has been, has been great to work with. We have that running on our Kubernetes cluster in the deployed uh, Prometeo platform. We use uh, IBM IoT service as an NQTT broker. So if for, for folks who are new to MQTT, it's a lightweight publish subscribe network protocol that runs over TCP primarily. Uh, it supports other uh, networks as well and essentially transports messages between devices. And, and then an MQTT broker is a server that receives all of, all of those messages from the clients and then routes them to the appropriate destination. Uh, all of the data is organized in a hierarchy of topics. So we have our different devices listening in to certain topics that are relevant to them. So instead of a you know, completely open pub sub system. Um, we also have an Android mobile application written in Java uh, that Marco uh, uh, actually contributed a lot of that. Um, and we also have a corresponding Samsung uh, watch application that Daniel, you worked on uh, written in open source uh, Tizen operating system. Right. On the firmware side, again, we work with Arduino IDE um, and, and the firmware, sub firmware, all the low level, right? It works with the hardware and the sensors to link the edge devices, which are the sensors itself, to the cloud using the watch and mobile app. Um, and then finally, we use a lot of cloud native frameworks on the deployment side. So we use things like Helm. Uh, we use a lot of GitHub Actions to introduce or integrate the continuous delivery, continuous integration piece. Uh, locally, we use tools like Scaffold and Stern uh, to provide that monitoring capabilities. Uh, we also use LogDNA in our cloud for centralized logging for the different events and errors as they happen on the cloud. So as you can tell, there's uh, it ranges from a lot of these different frameworks, and, and we try and reuse a lot of uh, open source work that's already been done. Did you want to hear something else? Sorry. Yeah, no, I, I think it's fascinating too, particularly how the builds and the um, my son's got to pass through. Excuse me, there. Sorry. <laughs> so the the GitHub Actions really, I think that's really the amazing part because a lot of the work that's been done uh, in the last year has really to go from you know how does this system work for just the developers who've been so close to it for so long to what needs to be in place for it to have a vibrant community. So mm -hmm. the, um, can you talk a bit about some of the, the ways that it's gone now from being a custom system to now being something that uh, you can choose to work one part of the, the solution, maybe the mobile app, or you can choose to work on the microservices for 
this uh, for the collection of the data and then for the data science. Maybe you can talk a bit about some of uh, the recent work that's been done as it was prepared for release as, as the peer project for new developers to take part in. Absolutely. So I think the original team, uh, you know, Marco Salami, uh, when they proposed the solution, uh, it was it was a proof of concept, so so to speak. It was built on Node Red, uh, uh, which it's a fantastic open source tool that you can use for things like this. And uh, you know, with Marco's help and guidance, what we did afterwards was sort of take each piece in that uh, Node workflow uh, and create a service out of that that can live independently scale independently as needed. And then we put in GitHub Actions as a glue to sort of bring it all together. So, uh, you know, at this time, when a developer comes in, makes a contribution, let's say to one of the microservices, um, there are certain GitHub Actions that run to um, maybe check on linting, check on certain formatting, uh, and then also builds the project before a pull request is created. And once that is created, we have a community where uh, we encourage code review. We encourage uh, uh, having somebody else look at the code before merging it into the main branch. Uh, and once all of that is done, there's another set of GitHub actions that will then build a containerized image out of it, um, push the image to the container registry. Like I said, we use IBM container registry, uh, and then update the Kubernetes um, um, sort of container labels appropriately so it starts using the new image. Um, so yeah, that's that's sort of how it works right now. Um, for from again from an open source point of view, you brought up you know skills. Uh, as you can tell, Peter ecosystem is very diverse, um, and so there's a lot of stuff you can do as a developer if you want to contribute. If you're interested in learning, if you're interested in you know, um, helping the firefighters. If you're, if if you are in that space or know somebody in that space and you want to help, um, I'll tell you specifically at this point, the project is looking for uh, developers on the mobile side, watch developers. Uh, but then again, as I mentioned before, um, you know, if you want to help in any of the other areas, uh, th th we'll be super excited to have you. Um, with that being said, you're not just looking for technical expertise here, right? So you can absolutely help the project in a non-technical capacity. That's the beauty of open source. So let's say you're a project manager or you have experience in that field, uh, we invite you to help run our technical steering committee meetings, for example, and there are other events around the project as well. Uh, if you're a technical documentation writer, uh, then we can use your help and your expertise to make our GitHub documents easier to consume. Uh, and then Final example I have is if you if you um, you know the project is always looking for advocates who can talk about the project, talk to the project, and make connections with other relevant communities. So there's absolutely more than one way to help. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you, Upkar. Um, so Salome, going back to you, building on what Upkar just mentioned around um, how folks can come in and bring their own skills to the project. Uh, can you talk a bit about some of the partners uh, beyond IBM, beyond Prometeo themselves that have been involved in testing the project and providing feedback? And if there's any organizations that you would love to see engage in this project, um, what sort of um, organizations would you love to see uh, take part? I would like to, to see a lot of ones because I think it's a key point, the, the partnership with, with the uh, Call for Code ecosystem for the tech and digital ecosystem. So uh, I'm thinking about uh, experts in, in, in mobile application, but also in hardware, in software, because Prometeo has hardware side, software side. Uh, we need data scientists. We need uh, uh, companies with expertise in AI. So everyone is welcome. Uh, we are really excited with Pira community and every contribution matters. Uh, till now, we count on amazing partners like Samsung, like Arrow, like uh, the university here in Barcelona, the Universidad Autónoma de Barcelona. And, and we, we really 
uh, uh, excited with this kind of collaboration because uh, you you we love technology so uh, we are helping firefighter and at the same time we are increasing our skills in in tech in in ai in cloud in hardware in software and we are meeting amazing people talented people so everyone is welcome it's a great community and i would like to see uh, a lot of, of you uh, in fira community please we are waiting for you excellent okay Great. So, Marco, building off of that, um, I know you've had lots of conversations with fire departments and organizations around the world. Um, we know that Pura originated from Promoteo in the context of being uh, as part of the Catalonian um, uh, Fire Fighters uh, organization. Um, as you look to expand beyond Spain, what sort of things would change in the platform if it needed to be adopted? or used in the United States versus in maybe Argentina or Australia? What sort of changes might need to happen, like sensors added, different chemicals, um, and what sort of um, next steps do you think there are for the sensors and what's, what goes into the platform? Yes, uh, what is clear is that uh, all five veterans over the world, they have uh, the, the same problem and the Maybe this is the solution no, for the problem that they have exposition to toxic substances. There are some differences depending on the firefighter department. For example, here in Catalonia, uh, firefighters, they have a GPS in the walkie-talkie. But uh, in Argentina, for example, some departments, they don't have a GPS. So, for example, the idea that we have is to include the GPS location. Now that we have the mobile application, we can add the location and send to the platform in order to have a map with all the free fighters that are working in the wildfire on real time. Uh, there are other places, for example, uh, where they need uh, to measure methane. Um, so maybe in the future we can add this uh, this sensor but it depends on the on the firefighters that or the department that the we will work in the future in united states uh, i think uh, that we have to include more sensors for example the acrolein and uh, well, more, more sensors in order to get more data and we can explode in the in the application. And um, the, there are uh, wildfire uh, firefighters, but there are structure uh, firefighters, no? The firefighters, they, they work in the, in the city and they need to measure another kind of uh, gases. So it will, it will uh, evolve uh, depending on the, of the different departments that we are going to to work with. Yeah. Let me let me uh, say that I'm totally agree with I totally agree with Marco. Uh, the problem is the same. We have a global problem. Uh, they are suffering headaches because of the exposure to, to gases and the, this problem is global. So Prometeo and, and the PIRA community uh, must work on a unique solution. But uh, thanks to Open Source, we, we want to, to have a solution flexible enough and open enough in order to, to consider the specific requirements from each region. That is what uh, uh, Marco mentioned about the gases, the different sensor, uh, depending of the kind of vegetation in in each part of the of the well, but uh, uh, thanks to the Pira community, the solution could be the the same one all over the world and with a really uh, a quick uh, implementation. But of course, uh, each one uh, can add or can um, adapt uh, the solution to to the specific requirements 
for each uh, fire station or firefighter department in the world? For sure, uh, Daniel, that uh, one thing that can change is, are the limits no, for each window that we are mentioning. So this is for sure, depending on the uh, legal issues in each uh, country, can change too. And the other point is the evolution that uh, we can include a lot of things. We have a device in the firefighter and uh, we have a, a mobile with an application. So uh, we can include a lot of things. We can include uh, heart rate. We can um, include uh, the stress of the firefighter in the solution. Uh, we can uh, use this data in order to plan the next uh, uh, assignments of the firefighters to the control bands. So we can do a lot of things. Uh, so uh, everybody that they want to help us, <laughs> they, will, they will be welcomed. And of course, all firefighters are invited to join to this community because uh, Prometeo and Pira is for them, is, is to, to have a great solution for them, a solution to, to help protect them. So uh, every suggestion, every recommendation, every requirement from firefighters and first responders in general uh, will be welcome. Excellent, excellent. So with that as the segue, um, we've, we've been on a great journey, I think, from understanding the problem, uh, getting to a version one, getting to a version three, and then version four, which was just released in July as Pura. Um, I know you have a roadmap for where you wanna go next, um, both as a startup, as well as with the open source community and the ecosystem of partners. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what you have in mind, what the next tests would involve, and uh, kind of set the stage for uh, some of what you mentioned around the physiological um, data that you want to bring in. Yes, of course. Uh, our next milestone are adapting the hardware for use in new locations, in different locations, improving the analysis of toxin exposure over time, and adding new mobile and smartphone capabilities. We have this plan you see in the screen. We have a plan of three phases with milestones. There are three areas of improvement we mentioned before. First, one area related to the hardware side, the IoT device, with focus on adding new sensor and improve the design of the casing to be robust enough. A second area of software platform to improve analytics and data. And third, an area with focus on new capabilities on the smartphone device, the phone and the watch. Marco mentioned before we can add variables from the firefighter like, like hair rate or, or other variables. So uh, we can uh, explore uh, this area of new capabilities in the, in the smartphone and in the smart watch. And the most important milestone uh, will be doing field testing in several countries and locations to, to ensure we cover the main requirements from wildland firefighters around the world. We mentioned before, I encourage everyone to join PIRA. Firefighters are well prepared. They are brave enough, but they don't have superpowers. We must help them with technology. Every contribution matters. If you are a, a first responder, you can help with key requirements. If you have a technical skills, it's a great opportunity to help. For software developer, but also for hardware specialists, data scientists, network specialists, security expert for everyone. Everyone uh, can add value to the solution and you can do it in Pira community. You, mil you will meet new colleagues, you will increase your skills, and your contribution can, can help save lives. Please join Pira. We are waiting for you there. I, I think that uh, you can learn a lot, uh, a lot of about technologies that you're not going to see each other. No, it's not very common to see all these kind of uh, technologies uh, working all together. Yeah. And uh, you want to know about hardware, about uh, development, uh, everything that uh, you will need in the future if you want to create a IoT project for yourself. So here is the place I think where you can learn a lot. 
And we are, we invite students from universities. If mm -hmm. you are studying a degree in technology, in engineering, it's a good way to, to improve your skills and to, to, to practice your skills in a, in a really, in a real environment because for, for, in the job, you will find this kind of, of, of tools like GitHub, like uh, the, the Linux Foundation space for, for open source uh, projects. So it's a good way to, to, to help and, and to, to increase your skills. So I would like to see young people in the community too, helping us to, to improve the solution. Excellent. Yeah, and we're, we're coming up on a traditional time of the year for folks to get involved with open source projects. Um, there's an event uh, called Hacktoberfest where folks tag issues within the GitHub repositories, particularly the small things that we've um, we've needed help with, maybe we haven't gotten around to. So uh, I'd say definitely go check out those repositories, look for anything tagged as good first issue, Hacktoberfest, and get involved. Uh, one of the ones actually we, we've been trying to get through is, um, you know, th things like a logo, right? So we, we kind of have a basic logo right now. If you're interested in helping improve the design of it. Um, uh, you can take a look at that. Obviously the documentation, maybe if you know more about the standards, the there's AEGL standards in Europe, the US standards, Australian standards, uh, anything you can bring to the table, technical or non-technical, I think would be very much in, in, in appreciated in terms of um, kind of bringing this to the next level. Um, and uh, an important thing is also the milestones, the field testing. Uh, to be honest, I, I were on IT in technology for, for a long time, but it's the first time I, I went to the field uh, with a firefighter to test uh, version one, version two, version three with, with uh, these amazing people. And, and it's amazing to, to be there and, 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 and see how technology can, can help them. Uh, we need volunteers in the field testing, so it's a good way to 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 collaborate in, in tech, but also to, to be in the field uh, in a control environment, of course, uh, in press kit bands or control bands uh, to see that uh, the solution works. Excellent, excellent. Um, Car, do you have any other final thoughts around um the technology or what you would like to see in the future of the project? Well, actually, since you have this page up, I would like to invite folks to our uh, to our public meetings, which take place every Wednesday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. So we get together and, and we talk tech, we talk, uh, you know, um, about the issues that are open, work through our GitHub board. Um, so if you want to get a little bit more feel, like you, you, don't, you don't have to come in and, and start speaking or taking part like that, you can come in and watch. Uh, hang out with us, so absolutely invite everybody to come in. Um, uh, Daniel, to answer your question, I think the, the one part that's sort of missing right now, or I see as a gap, is any sort of integration testing between the different services and the components that seem to work very well individually, but we, I, I absolutely feel that that little link is missing. So again, um, if folks are interested in that area or that field, there's a ton to contribute to or with. Sorry. Yeah, and that, that reminds me, we do have a project board you can check out at the platform, at the Pure organization level. Uh, so you can see the, the issues that are uh, across the board. Oops, wrong one. Um, let's see, projects, yeah. So we've got a, a GitHub project board. Take a look at that. Uh, we do kind of triage what goes on through here on that weekly technical um, town hall with the community. Uh, so you can check these out. You can look into the individual repositories. They have some issues. And uh, some of them, the most high priority ones are aligned to those three milestones uh, that, um, that Salome had, had taken us through. So take a look at those, see if you can get involved right during this, converse, uh, this conference. Um, and I know there's some of the great stuff that's happening at this conference, including the, the Linux Foundation Zephyr project. That's something we wanna in integrate with this real-time operating systems for, for, for the hardware. Um, so definitely take, uh, take a look at that. And um, so this session it has been pre-recorded, uh, but during the actual time slot when this is going to be broadcast, 
Uh, some of us will be online there to take your questions live. So I want to encourage you to, uh, to think about uh, any sort of um, questions you may have during the event or after the event um, that you want to bring forward. And of course, you know, every Wednesday, we would really appreciate uh, folks joining the town halls, just listening in, check out the recordings in advance if you want, um, and, uh, and really take a look at uh, what's going on. So uh, the best place to get started, if you just want to get a high level overview, share this information with other folks, uh, there is a website, it's uh, pura-platform.org. Uh, so you can check that out. On the top right, that's the link to the GitHub organizations. Uh, we have a Slack channel under the Call for Code workspace. Uh, look for the Pura Prometeo channels there. Um, and, um, and, and yeah, check out the Get Involved uh, guide, right? So this is a good landing page uh, for, for ways that you can take part that we've talked about. So with that, um, I wanna thank my, the, the, all the panelists uh, for their contributions. Um, I'm really looking forward to a bright future for the Pura project and um, really encourage you to, to get involved, ask any questions and, um, and join us, make the world safer. All right, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, see you in the community.